At this point, it's my pleasure and my honor to introduce you to Terrafugia's chief test pilot and flight test coordinator, Colonel Phil Mateer, who will describe what it was like to make the first flight of the transition. Phil. Thank you, Carl. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As Carl said, I'm Phil Mateer. I'm a retired Air Force Reserve Colonel. And in that capacity, I've flown uh, five different fighter attack and trainer aircraft. Uh, the most recently was the S-16 Falcon. Uh, the longest tour was in the A-10 Thunderbolt II. I've flown the F-4 Phantom and several others. My first test pilot experience came as a defense contractor, providing test pilot and flight test services for several Air Force programs. My civilian aviation experience goes all the way back to high school when I got my private pilot's license. And I've flown many types of civil aircraft. Uh, in fact, in preparation for this flight, I've been flying seven different civil aircraft for comparisons. And now I'm going to tell you about my favorite fl first flight in the Terrafugia transition. At 7.40 in the morning on March the 5th at Plattsburgh, New York, I got a go fly from the Terrafugia test control. The chase aircraft was in the air, the chase truck was beside me and ready, and all of the Terrafugia organizations checked in with the go fly. That was the uh, weather observer, the data manager, and Terrafugia Tower all gave me a go. Our, our chase, at the, this was a culmination of 18 months of test planning, and, and Carl said we started testing this six months ago. We've been through a test protocol specifically designed for this vehicle. We started with drive testing, then low speed taxi testing, then high speed taxi testing. We've actually been on the runway operating between 90 and 100 miles an hour for quite a while now while staying on the ground. Uh, the FAA has inspected the vehicle. They gave us an airworthiness certificate. We're ready. Our test protocol called for the first flight to be what we call a runway flight. That is, I simply take off, fly straight ahead on the runway, and land straight ahead. These are our phase one tests for this vehicle for what you call it, your thought uh, thought, experiment. thought experiment. So we have three phases, and we won't be flying away from the runway till phase two. We're still in phase one right now, so that's what you'll see in the video. You'll see the airplane take off and come back and land on the runway. We do this simply as a risk management process. It's a building block approach. Deke Slayton was one of the original seven Mercury astronauts, and he's also an Air Force test pilot, and he said that 90% of your risk in a total program comes in that first flight. And also, there isn't much you can do about it. He said, you have, to bite it all off. you have to bite it all off in one chunk. Well, we took our bite smartly. OK, back to the end of the runway and a word about our pictures. Uh, I will be describing to you the first flight, and you'll see the video from the first flight. But we actually flew seven times between the 5th and 7th of March. So the pictures I'll show you are kind of a combination. I tried to pick the best picture that displays what I'm trying to talk about. Our chase aircraft started his final approach, and he radioed me, go. So I uh, accelerated the airplane towards takeoff speed. I like this picture. Uh, it was from that morning, running down the runway at sunrise, the sun shining on it. You get the feeling of uh, accelerating. Which it's a full throttle event. But there's another piece of it. Notice the automobile suspension and tire system. And when you see it go by you in the video, you'll notice this airplane is really smooth on the runway and on the ground. Uh, General aviation airplanes, in fact, all airplanes usually have three gear. And so on the ground, they're bouncy. And the pilots have just got kind of used to airplanes that don't handle very well on the ground. Pilots are going to love this vehicle on the ground. When I reached the planned air, when I reached the planned takeoff speed, I pulled back in the control stick. The vehicle came smoothly and positively in the air. Now, a word about control systems at this point. In the car mode on the ground, we have a steering wheel, a gas pedal on the floor for your foot, and a brake on the floor for your foot. All the controls of a normal car so that any driver can drive it. No special driver training. In the air, we have a control stick, rudder pedals on the floor, and a center console. All the controls of a normal airplane so that any pilot can fly it. No special, no special controls on either mode, no special training. It was apparent to me immediately after takeoff that I had control of a very stable and smooth airplane. Now this led to a moment of humor for me because I, uh, we had practiced this a uh, hundred times between Carl and I in the simulator this first flight. And, and so we'd practice all different scenarios on what could happen, what if this happened, what. So I'm kind of in this hypervigilant state, and it's kind of interesting to look at your mind when you're there. 
and then all of a sudden I realized none of this is happening. You know, I'm just simply flying a very smooth airplane. It's kind of a wahoo moment. And all I have to do now is fly down the runway and land. I leveled off after that initial climb, and at this moment, I had, it felt to me kind of the, the thought came to mind, just like the first time I got in to drive test it. I had a test plan and a test card. I was going to drive at 10 miles an hour and do this kind of turn, and then 20 miles an hour and do that kind of turn. And after about a minute, I realized, you know what? My daughter could do this. It drives like a car. In fact, it's fun. So I started having fun the first time I drove it, and the same thing. All of a sudden, I, it was flying nice. It was fun. Anyone could do it. As I said before, my mission in these phase one flights is simply to fly down the runway and land. The chase aircraft was there to support. The chase truck was on the runway to support. And fl actually flying down the runway and landing was easier than all these tests I did where I ran up to 100 miles an hour and then had to pull back the throttle and, and stop it. I actually had the easy part when I actually got to fly it down the runway and land. The airplane flew straight as an arrow. You'll notice in the video, it's, it's very smooth and controllable and precise. It's stable, but at the same time, when I moved the flight controls, it did exactly what I intended it to do. But all good things must come to an end, so I had to descend and uh, hopefully all good flight tests come to a good end too. I lowered the nose and began to descend to the runway. The landing was just like the simulator. Pilots will recognize this picture as a normal landing attitude. Rear wheels touch down with the front wheels slightly in the air, the front wheels lower to the ground and then you roll out. That's just a normal, as normal as could be. All seven of those landings have been very smooth touchdowns followed by controllable rollouts. One of the reasons is the cockpit has outstanding visibility of the runway environment and you can see all those all around you. The other part of this is that this, uh, this airplane is designed to take the potholes of Boston. So that design is over four G's, much more than in any airplane. The uh, airplane requirements are the car requirements are much stricter in that, so we have a much more sturdy gear. And there's several design features where the car requirements are actually stricter and, and we're safer than normal airplanes. The test plan called for me to stop straight ahead on the runway and the chase truck did a drive around inspection to make sure everything was still on the aircraft before I taxied in and came clear. But it's at this point that I realized why we really had a chase truck, because something inside of me wanted to step on that gas pedal, race for the nearest gate on that, on that airport, retract the wings, and take this thing home. And so Carl had a chase truck out there, really, to make sure that I brought the vehicle back. So when, when you see the video and the chase truck is racing after me, you know the guys in the video are really saying, come back, Phil, it's ours. My honest comment after the flight was that the first flight was remarkably unremarkable. It flew like a really nice airplane. And for a vehicle that I can drive home or drive to work, that's an amazing statement. I'll remind you of Deke Slayton's quote that 90% of a total program risk, 90% of a total program risk is in that first flight. And we're past that. So Terrafugia has taken off in more ways than one. Thank you.